Hello, my friends. Russians are starting to deploy a large number of troops to the occupied territory. In the area of Robotyne, approximately 50,000 Russian military personnel have already been detected. And it's known that they continue to deploy more troops. Uh, the number of offensive actions after the capture of Avdiivka isn't decreasing. 70 attacks have been conducted in a day. And today there are also changes along the front line in favor of the Russians. But let's go through everything step by step. Let's start immediately with the Bakhmut direction. The situation near Chasiv Yar is deteriorating here. Occupies are actively storming areas near Bogdanivka, Ivanivsky, Klushinivka and Andreevka. 11 attacks were conducted in a day. Also, a large number of shelling incidents are recorded along the entire front line and more and more evidence confirms that the Russians managed to advance through the fields from Romova. So, looking at one of the maps, it confirms that the occupiers have moved closer to Chasiv Yar by one kilometer and 200 meters. They are moving through the fields because, as before, they cannot capture Ivanivska or Bogdanivka. Thus, they are driving a reach in our defense to further develop success. The Ukrainian armed forces are doing everything they can, but just like in the Avdiivka direction, there are more Russians, so the situation is difficult. In the Avdiivka direction, the general staff reports on Russian offensive actions from the side of Severne and Laspashkina. As expected, they want to completely cut off this section of the front and straighten the front line. Unofficially, as before, even from the Ukrainian side, information continues to come in that Lastochkina is falling under Russian control. Although it seems that battles are still ongoing. They have already conducted nine attacks in a day. Today, battles are also continuing in the area of Romaiske and Nevelske, but they have no success here and the front line remains unchanged as before. In the direction of Marinka, the occupiers conducted 19 attacks in a day and are trying to capture Georgievka, the village of Pobeda, and Novomikhailovka. The occupiers are increasingly advancing to the outskirts and the Ukrainian armed forces repel attacks within the settlements. So the situation is difficult, but the fight continues. In the Vuhlidar direction, the occupiers have again begun offensive actions towards Staromayorske and are shelling the village. Attacks on Malinivka have also begun. Additionally, the occupiers have increased the number of shelling along the entire front line. For now, the battles are ongoing, so we wait to see how events will unfold further. Meanwhile, the Russians are rapidly constructing a new highway from the border of the Rostov region towards Mariupol. They desperately needed to increase the speed of deploying troops and equipment from Russia in the direction of Mariupol, as it takes longer via Crimea in any case. So here it's a straight road. Overall, the Russians are working extensively on logistics. 
in the Zaporizhia direction. After yesterday's confirmed advance of 1 km and 200 meters across a 13 km front stretch, the situation has become even more complicated. Today, the occupies intensified attacks on Robotina. They conducted around 10 assaults in a day. They are attempting to regain control of this village, suffering significant losses. But as we already know, this doesn't deter them. Therefore, the occupies continue their offensive actions to achieve their goal. So the situation is extremely difficult. Shalin is also intensified as favored by the Russians, destroying everything around. But despite the complexity of this situation, today the Ukrainian forces managed to capture Russian soldiers confirmed by war correspondent. Today, the enemy repulsed all our attacks on the village of Rabatino and regained the previously lost positions. There is even information that our paratroopers from the 76th Airborne Assault Division were taken prisoner. We, the staff officers of the Dnipro military headquarters, have never commented on the decisions of the general staff of the armed forces, but today we dare to do so. We believe that it was a mistake to transfer the Zaporizhia direction to the Dnipro military command under the current commander, General Teplinsky. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces report from the ground that the Russians have once again killed two captured Ukrainian soldiers. The Russians took two of our prisoners out of the trenches and shot them near Robotino. Russian commanders give orders to demonstratively execute our prisoners in order to demoralize our troops. Overall, it seems that soon uh, it will be even hotter here than in the Avdivka direction. And it seems that this summer will definitely not be a time for a Ukrainian counteroffensive. In the Kherson direction, Fallon of the right bank continues. The general staff reports that attempts to push the Ukrainian forces out of the left bank have resumed. However, Russian war correspondents write that so far the assaults have ceased. No change. The enemy continues to hold a bridgehead in the village of Krenki. Today, our troops did not attempt to storm the bridgehead. A little bit of it was treated with artillery. Due to the enemy's electronic warfare, we also made little use of drones today. Now all the attention of General Teplinsky is turned to the village of Rabatino, but even there, thanks to his stupid orders, not everything is going smoothly. Overall, the main thing is that the foothold remains under the control of the Ukrainian forces. For now, we wait to see how events will unfold further. Now, let's move on to the Luhansk direction. In the area of Siversk, the occupants have resumed attacks on Bilohorivka. However, as before, they have had no success here and the front line remains unchanged. In other areas along the front line, there are only Shalin incident. Attacks on the village of Perne continue in the direction of Krimina, but they are not achieving any success. Shalin of other populated areas continues as well. In the direction of Svatove, uh, there have been no changes. There is complete silence and even serious Shalin incidents haven't been recorded. In the Kupinsk direction, after President Zelensky's visit yesterday, the occupies immediately began storming Sinkivka and Shalin along the entire front line. So far, there have been no changes along the front line in a day, although the activity is not the highest. The occupies attempted three assaults on Sinkivka, 
all of which were unsuccessful. Currently, there is no significant activity observed in this direction. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.